they sent me to this house, but they've also been very courteous to me when uh, I was in my lowest moment. So I want to take this opportunity to thank them. And I thank them because I'm also glad that uh, during that time, I was uh, able to engage appropriately with the committee that uh, their vote enabled me to be part of, which is the committee of, uh, on, on finance and budget of the Senate. And with that regard, also, I want to thank uh, so much uh, the chair of the committee, Senator Captain Ali Roba, who has actually enabled us to, for the first time, engage very soberly with the National Treasury on this issue pertaining the debt burden of our country. Mr. Speaker, I think that most of my thoughts and uh, most of my alignment in terms of uh, uh, support to this bill were definitely, uh, you know, uh, echoed in the report and uh, therefore the bill that has been tabled here while we're in the committee. However, there are some aspects of this bill that I think that is important that I do emphasize on. And I want to start with probably where my senior brother, Sen uh, uh, Senator Danson Mungatana, started with on the issue of deficit. Mr. Speaker, I, can, uh, I, I do understand the concern that my brother has on the issue of deficit. But I want to be more liberal in this thought of deficit because, you know, government is not a trading entity to the extent that we are always going to have a deficit if you're going to be in government. The question then is what actually constitutes your deficit? If your deficit is actually more towards the issue of uh, development, then it's a worthy deficit. But if it's the issue of more consumption and uh, what we are seeing as paying bills in this country, whereby over 62% of our government spending goes to paying uh, uh, recur recurrent budgets, then that's a problem. And then the second bit of it that I wanted to emphasize because it might water down this bill is the issue of where then do you finance that deficit. If you borrow from outside the country, it sometimes makes it easier than if you borrow within the country, which then leads to crowding out. So this bill, if I were to perhaps reframe the essence of it, is actually a debt relief bill. Having a debt is okay. But when you have debt that you can't manage, then it says that you have to actually have, 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 a, have a relief mechanism. And uh, the bill is at the essence of actually being able to realize that as a country, we need to manage the debt. It's not that we are, have a problem with having the debt. And for the time, for the, for the time Mr. Speaker, we actually went through all the options that we have to be able to manage our debt. I, I do appreciate, honestly, and in Kiswahili they say, Mugala muwe lakini yaki mupe. I think that we sat with the chairman of the budget committee. We went through every tool that economically makes sense with the minister or rather the CS for finance, uh, Professor Juguna, and I do appreciate him. And looked at all the, all the options that are available for us to manage our debt, you know, starting from things like how can we engage on interest reduction? And Mr. Speaker, we came and looked at issues around how do we, do we even need perhaps to change the terms of our loans to be able to manage this debt, Mr. Speaker? Or do we need to even think about the classical idea of reducing the principle around debt issues in this country? Or do we even need perhaps to consolidate the debt in this country, Mr. Speaker? Or uh, even the more classical ones is people trying to re uh, uh, re refinance their loans, Mr. Speaker. When we looked at all these things, Mr. Speaker, it became eminent that we were able to interrogate the single problem in our debt uh, management in this country. And the problem, as articulated by this bill, Mr. Speaker, is what we call the metric discipline, whereby people uh, who came before us, who are parliamentarians, when they think about uh, going for debt, you come up with an absolute number. And then you cap that we want to borrow up to 10 trillion. But then what you lose the sight of is that if this 10 trillion was to be subjected into your economy capacity, which is otherwise called GDP, then what does it come up to? And that is how, actually how we came up 
to realizing that our debt situation is 64.1% of our GDP. Why? Because we started by putting a number without realizing where does do we stand in terms of our GDP. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, this debt re relief bill is going to help us to actually uh, objectively put this, uh, uh, this uh, debt uh, borrowing mechanism of 55% as a percentage of GDP in its net present value, meaning that at any given time that we look at our GDP and we want to borrow as a country, then you're looking at what is our GDP at that particular time in point, at that, at that particular point in time, and then you go 55% of that, Mr. Speaker. I find this brilliant, Mr. Speaker, because it then helps us to be able to put it as a performance metric. And Mr. Speaker, this is going to enable us to do three things which are very important for this country to be able to manage our debt. Number one, Mr. Econ Mr. Speaker, if in any case that we find that our economy is contracting, then it will mean that the percentage remains and therefore the, the, the borrowing become a constant and therefore it also contracts. This is brilliant, Mr. Speaker, because that is the mechanism that actually will be able to help us manage a debt that we cannot be able to deal with. But the good thing is that the vice versa is also uh, standing in the sense that if the economy does expand there for Mr. Speaker, then it means that the gap that you have, the window of borrowing that you also have, will also have to uh, expand. And that therefore will mean that it will be a development matrix that actually forces you to start thinking about borrowing within some priority items, which for me, I think will be very developmental. But also, if you think about it, we are having exchequer receipts that every single day, Mr. Speaker, at the end of the, of the week, the Treasury has to think about paying for interest, Mr. Speaker. So if we go with this matrix, Mr. Speaker, it will also mean that 